hope you're having a wonderful Wednesday so far today and you are just as excited as I am that the knit along for 2017 has begun right here on the Marley Bird YouTube channel and of course I'm on Facebook Live and the Facebook group. There has been a lot of buzz today in the Facebook group, so much so that I thought it would be a good idea to get on here and do a live question and answer and my plan is to take this question and answer series right now with many of you who are here on Facebook with me and then download this video and upload it to YouTube for those followers who might not be following us uh, with us in the Facebook group. I want to make sure everybody has a chance to hear all of the advice and I'm going to use this quote, this quotation, uh, corrections, because they're not really corrections. How about I say explanations um, that I'm going to be able to provide. So there's many of you that are here right now, and uh, I, I'm excited about that. So hello, everybody. I'm excited that you are here, and uh, we're going to talk about the textured triangle shawl, obviously. You know what I'm talking about because you are already a part of this wonderful knit along. This is a shawl that is a free pattern on the Red Heart website. It's de designed by a lovely designer named Diane Moyer. And it uses the brand new Red Heart Soft Essentials yarn and it uh, a, a pair of size 11 needles depending on what gauge you get. And it is really a super fun pattern really easy to do and there are a couple of tweaks that I've done in the videos just to make it even easier for beginners and what I thought I didn't need to explain apparently I should have explained more because those of you who are experienced knitters caught what I did there and uh, it's throwing you off a little bit so I want to explain what I did and why I did it and explain to you why I didn't go in depth about it in the videos so that's that's my goal here that's what I'm gonna do so hello everybody um, if you have questions regarding the knit along please go ahead and ask them to me right here on the Facebook live and I will answer them as best I can can but I will start here at the very beginning okay so as you know the knit along here starts with section one and we began with a garter tab which is really super easy you cast on two stitches and you work for eight rows everybody did great on that and everybody did really awesome through setup row one it was when we got to set up row two that people had some questions and they asked me why I changed a couple things up and so I'm going to explain now. Um, let me start off by saying that the reason I did not explain all of this in the YouTube video is because I really felt like if I over explained some of these things that I'm going to explain now, it would muddy the water, especially for the beginners. Those of you who are experienced knitters, you will totally understand why I did what I did. And hopefully you'll forgive me for not mentioning it. You know, hindsight's always 20-20. Uh, maybe I should have mentioned it during the video, but I, I consciously did not mention it because I didn't want to muddy any waters. But, you know, this is this is the way it goes. This is what, how we learn, right? So when we get to row two, the instructions say to do a knit one one, knit front and back, knit one, and then it says yarn over, okay? So it was knit one, knit front and back, knit one, yarn over. Place marker, knit two, place marker. Now, at this point in the pattern, I have said that as we make the shawl, each side is going to mirror the other. And so for me, the way I teach beginners, it's easier for them to understand, okay, if I did a knit front and back, knit one, yarn over, and then I have a marker, knit two, marker, my opposite side should go yarn over, knit one, knit front and back, correct? Because that would be the distinct mirror image based on stitches, okay? So I did that. That's the way I taught it, was that you put your marker, you knit two, you put your marker, and then I said you would do a yarn over, knit one, knit front and back, which would be the mirror image of what we did prior to the markers, correct? Now, having said that, the instructions say that we're supposed to do a yarn over, knit front and back, 
and then end with a knit two on that side of the shawl. Technically, it is a mirror image. Technically, it is. Actually, it's more of a mirror image than what I switched to because of the way the knit front and back is made and it, where it leaves a pearl bump. However, when you're teaching beginners that one side needs to look like another, it's so much easier for them to understand the way a stitch is written and know that if it's knit front and back, knit one yarn over, and then on the opposite it would go yarn over, knit one, knit front and back. Then to say it would be yarn over, knit front and back, knit two. See, you see how explaining that is, is a little bit more confusing and muddy than if you just do what I told you to do? <laughs> so having said this, that does not mean that the instructions are incorrect. It absolutely does not mean that. The instructions are absolutely correct. And that does not mean my video is incorrect. My video is completely correct. Either way will work. But when I'm teaching a video, my goal really is to make it as understandable as possible for the masses. And when you're teaching beginners, especially when it's a bunch of beginners in a knit along, it's very easy to break it down in the set, how I broke it down for them to not only see what's going on, but to fully grasp how it is that they are working these increases. So I'm gonna look over here in the comments and see, okay, awesome. You guys are saying it makes sense, you understood, fantastic. So that's, that's the number two. That was the small little change in number two, okay? And as you, you work through number two, you get to number three, everything's fine. And then I change up a little bit something on number four, okay? And it goes along the same lines and the same reasoning and the same rationale as what I did in number two, okay? Here it is. This is, this is so easy. It's going to make sense as soon as I say it. You ready? So you start off row four with a knit one, knit front and back, and then you continue on for the shawl. Okay, but in row four, it has you knit to the last two, st three stitches. It actually has you go to the last three stitches. It has you knit front and back and then knit two. Well, if we started with the knit one and then a knit front and back, yes, that's three stitches, right? But once again, see how that's a knit one, knit front and back? And then over here, they're saying, oh, we're going to go to three, the last three stitches. We'll knit front and back and then knit two. It doesn't, it doesn't correlate. It's very hard to understand, especially for new new knitters who don't grasp the concept of where that purl stitch is going to show. It really doesn't really matter. They really understand when you say you're going to begin with a knit one, knit front and back, and you're going to end with a knit front and back, knit one. We are doing, nothing is, is different in the sense of we are actually getting our increase. I just shifted it over one stitch to really make it line up and work really well, especially for the beginner knitters. You guys with me on that? Does that make sense? Let me see here. There's many of you. Um, Ada is saying beginners will not understand, but who, who knows who understands? that's exactly it is those of you who are experienced knitters you completely get what I did why I did it and you're just trying to understand hey what's going on whereas the inexperienced knitters I just tried to make it literally as easy as possible for them um, so that's how that goes now since I've done the video I have uh, updated the line by line instructions to incorporate as, as clearly as possible what I did in the video and I also put in there that it, it, it doesn't matter if you follow exactly what I did in the video or if you do as it's written in the pattern exactly both ways are are the same both ways you will get the equal results the, it, the important part here is that you want to stay consistent which whatever way you choose to do just be consistent with it and it will work out fine okay so let's see here. Uh, I'm, I'm so happy. Lynn is telling me it makes perfect sense. Hi, Debbie. And it looks like uh, some other of you are, some of you are speaking Spanish to me and I wish I understood Spanish so I could know what you're saying. But anyways, um, so there you have it. That's why I made those. I mean, there's such subtle changes in the video. I really did not think it was important to mention them. And I did not, once again, I did not want to confuse the situation. Sometimes over explaining myself or over explaining in a video can make it more difficult for a beginner knitter. And we want these beginner knitters really to succeed. And we want them to have that fulfillment and success and sense of um, accomplishment, right? So I want to make it as easy as possible for them. 
And, and there you have it. So that is my brief explanation and quick answering of a couple of major questions from the section one. And uh, hopefully that helps all of you out. Bye.